quite recently in terms of educating uh, management students in business schools like at the Kellogg School of Management, for example, uh, and joint programs in management, had to focus on how to better build and understand and leverage networks, social networks. And the assumption was that those social networks were primarily networks of human beings. But that's on the verge of changing. Today we are living in a world where the networks have some nodes that are individuals, some nodes that are databases, and increasingly in the future, some of those nodes in the network, in our social networks, are going to be robots. They're going to be these things called cognitive assistants, like IBM's Watson. And when you begin to imagine those multidimensional networks, those dynamics are going to be quite different from what we see in the workplace today. Today, when we work with technologies, we interact with the technology directly. So most of it are things like human-computer interaction, human-robotic interaction. Uh, but what is more important as we go forward is not just our interactions with the computer or our interaction with a robot, but our interactions with each other that are shaped and changed by the presence of robots on our teams. And robots become active, proactive players on the team. Cognitive assistants like IBM Watson become important players in the team. They're not simply people who are uh, being as a, you know, as something that we interact with, but are actually interacting with us and shaping our interactions. And so today, as we train the uh, business workforce of the next generation, we have to begin to help them understand, be prepared for a world where they need to be able to learn how to work with having the equivalent of a Watson in their pocket, as we like to say, and to live in a world where they will need to be able to understand and be able to be active consumers of uh, machine learning from text analytics. Uh, how do they make sense of it? One of the big challenges that we have from tools like Watson is that they can make some really impressive recommendations when it comes to medical diagnostics. They have been used by doctors, or at least IBM and companies like IBM hope that they'll be used by doctors to be able to make good predictions about people's illnesses, etc. But the challenge there is that these machine learning algorithms, these deep uh, mining algorithms, etc., have one big challenge, and that is they don't tell us why they are making those recommendations. And so one of the big uh, questions that is faced is that uh, one of these days, it'll be really helpful if a machine learning algorithm that makes a recommendation has a why button that you can press on that will tell you why it's making that recommendation. And this is the, actually a quite, a, it, it sounds somewhat amusing, but it's actually quite an important and profound issue because it means that people who are working in these spaces are working quite hard to see if there are ways in which they can make machine learning results interpretable, understandable, transparent in a way that can convince human beings that yes, what they are recommending does make sense. And until that happens, there is some skepticism about the extent to which managers and other professionals are likely to embrace their results. So these are all issues that we have to sensitize the next generation of business school students on and to help them understand the nuanced ways in which they'll be able to leverage what life would be like when individuals and networks are permeated by robots and cognitive assistants. I, I think that, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure the talent to impart this knowledge exists in the United States. It's just beginning. There are very few schools in the United States that are beginning to offer classes in this area. Uh, I'd like to believe that we at Kellogg are amongst the leading business schools that do this. Um, I can only think of a handful of business schools that are actually offering courses that specifically help train the manager in terms of being able to leverage these advanced analytics. Uh, I think that there is more progress made in training managers on how to run machine learning algorithms. What I'm talking about is not your ability to run a machine learning algorithm, but how do you leverage this information? How do you critically analyze the, the insights that you get from machine learning, for example, just to take one example, and how do you juxtapose it with other traditional sources of, of data so that you can then be able to make decisions in the future that are going to be different but informed by a variety of different data sources, including algorithmic results from places like this. Uh, in a lot of areas, I think this is now being referred to as people analytics, where you know initially a lot of this kind of people analytics actually had its roots in sports, where people had actually very specific hardcore statistics for teams. And so you saw that in the case of baseball, 
uh, there was a book and then a movie called Moneyball that talked about how you can take the numbers, you can take statistics of teams and therefore create a team that is really very good without a team that is uh, eating up a lot of uh, pay from people. So the Yankees pay a lot of players, but in this particular case in the book, uh, that's with the story chronicled in the Moneyball, uh, the Oakland A's manager Billy Bean was able to run the numbers and put together a team that was competitive and beat the New York Yankees even though he was not paying those players quite as much. The same thing also happened in basketball. And so you see that these things that started out in sports are now coming into the rest of the world. Uh, HR is what is now being rechristened as people analytics in many ways. Uh, Google played a very important role because they actually collected a lot of data on their workers and used it as a way of predicting performance both at the individual level as well as at teams. And so this whole area is moving forward. One of the areas that I think the progress is only now beginning is that while there's a lot of research looking at how people analytics is focusing on the attributes of the people, we are now beginning to see based on research that it's at least as important, if not more important, to focus on the relationships between people. So my co-author my co and I have been working on a piece that way we talk about moving from people analytics to relational analytics and recognizing that the dynamics and the relationships between people can be as important in determining what the outcomes of organizations would be. And so a lot of that is also part of what goes into training uh, the next generation MBA workforce is to understand how to leverage people analytics and how to combine it with the relational analytics.